Oh no! My program! It's broken! What should I do? Let's try printf. Maybe one more. Yeah, let's print out that. See what the address is. Uh, let's look up here. Yeah, let's print that one out too. Oh, there it is. I forgot to allocate memory. Yes. Hey, I think I got it figured out. Hey, don't forget to remove the debug stuff. Oh, yeah. Right, let's delete that one. Yeah, we gotta get all those debug statements. This one, that one. Yeah, get that one too. Okay, awesome. Now we just gotta make it. Oh no, my program, it's broken. Hey, welcome back everybody. Today's video, I mean, the intro was the lesson mostly but I wanna talk a little bit more about it because this is something that I see really commonly with new programmers and some old programmers. When they start turning to print statements, printf, or what every language has prints, you're, basically the point is that you're looking at print statements as a debugging tool, and this can be problematic. And of course, I get it, it's easy, I've done it myself, I've probably done it on this channel. Everybody knows how to make print statements, it's like the first thing, literally it's the first thing we ever learn, hello world. And especially if we're in a stage where we don't really, we haven't learned our debugging tools, we, we haven't learned how to use a debugger effectively, it's just a really easy route to take. So I don't blame anyone for doing it. But I did want to talk about it because it is problematic for a few different reasons. The first and hopefully the most obvious from this video from the intro is that it changes our code. When I start dropping printfs or print any print statement into my code, I'm changing it. I'm changing the structure of the code. And also all of those print statements that I'm adding to my code eventually, before I turn it in if I'm a student or before I send it off to the real world, if I'm a professional programmer making a product that people are going to use out there, I gotta remove those print statements. And again, those are changes. And again, folks, every time you change your code, even if those changes seem harmless, that is an opportunity for bugs to creep in. It's an opportunity for you to break stuff. I can't tell you how often I see this where a student makes some last minute change, they think it's harmless, and it ends up either introducing a bug, causing a crash, causing something not to compile, or results in a debug statement that they didn't remove that causes an auto grader to get confused, to break something. So point number one from this video is that when you're debugging, you want to take the route that changes your code as little as possible. I mean, obviously you hope eventually you're gonna find the bug and you're gonna fix the bug. That's gonna be a change in your code, hopefully for the better, but you don't wanna create a lot of other extraneous changes that don't have anything to do with the bug itself. Now, another problem, problem number two, when we are dealing with print statements is that they can be misleading. So anytime you print a standard out, typically this output is buffered. And that means that it may show up in the terminal later, basically after it actually ran. So you could run your print statement, but that doesn't mean that that print is going to occur right at that moment. So what this means is that your print might actually have run, but maybe the print doesn't show up because your bug caused a crash before it actually showed up but that line of code may actually have run. But if you're using print style debugging, well, maybe you don't think it got to a certain point that it actually got to, and that may throw you off. It may cause you to take longer to find the bug. It can just be confusing. Of course, let me know down in the comments if you wanna see concrete examples about how this works or where you might see them. Today, I'm just focusing on advice, but we could definitely get into that in a future video. So let me know if that's something you're interested in. And hopefully at this point, you're starting to be convinced that maybe this print style debugging isn't a good idea, but to give you yet another reason, another reason is that it's just slower. And I know that may be hard to believe because you're thinking, I mean, how long does it take for me to drop in a print statement? And then how long does it take for me to remove it? And of course the answer is not very long, but what really happens when people do a lot of print debugging is it's rarely just one print because they're bug hunting. So what you have to do is you have to start dropping print statements and you end up with three, four, five, 10 print statements to try to figure out where things are going wrong and what's going wrong. In between each of those print statements, you're compiling and you're running your code. And so that's taking extra time because sometimes those print statements don't tell you, I mean, you didn't learn what you needed to learn, what you wanted to learn, which is what's going on in my program. So maybe you have to go through another round of prints. You're dropping in more print statements and this process is just slow and it would be slow even if you didn't have to go back and clean all those prints out, but that's gonna add even more time. 
So the point is when you're debugging, what you're looking for is a process that's gonna be fast, that's not gonna be misleading, and it's not going to require you to change your code any more than the actual bug fix. So some of you may be wondering, what should we use? And the short answer is use a debugger. Use something like GDB, LLDB, if you're using C or C++, I mean, but just about any language is gonna have a debugger. So Python, use PDB. In Java, you have JDB. Most of your IDEs have debuggers built in, baked in. I mean, they're, they're just using one of these debuggers under the hood usually, but they give you access to a debugger. And of course, I have videos that I've made on how to use GDB. Take a look at those. Let me know if there's things that you think I've missed. I've also encouraged you to use GDB or LLDB and I've used them in other videos, but I wanted to re-emphasize it today because a lot of you aren't doing this and you're just making your life harder than it has to be. And I know some of you are worried about the learning curve and there is a little bit of a learning curve. There is, I'm not gonna lie to you. There are some commands you're gonna have to learn, but it's not as bad as most people expect it to be. And once you learn how to use a debugger, once you learn how to use the tools that are available to you, you are going to be so much faster at figuring out what's going on with your program. And this is especially true when it comes to seg faults and other crashes, aborts, asserts, failing, memory dumps, whatever. These things are gonna be way faster if you're working in a debugger because they'll usually find the point of failure for you and then you can just look around and figure out what happened. It's just gonna be so much faster and most of us like saving time. And so if this was helpful, please drop the video a like, subscribe to this channel if you don't wanna miss the next video. And until next week, I'll see you later.